Well, hello and uh, welcome to another This OMG Fishing Fly Tying video. A um, couple of things have gone on since the last time uh, I posted anything. It's in a transition time frame for us right now. Can't fish for certain species because the lakes are too cold, out of season, ice hasn't formed yet, so it's the best time to sit down and start to tie some flies. That being said, I do have a different hat on. I've retired my Shimano hat that I've been faithfully wearing as my lucky fishing hat. And uh, I've got some merch that's not just white. I've got black t-shirts now. So I thought maybe, you know, um, this shirt would contrast better when I'm tying a fly. So I got a phone call the other day and somebody had uh, said to me, oh, I lost this. I had this really good salmon fly. And I lost it. I don't know where it came from. All I know is what it looks like and that it worked really well. Do you think you could tie me one up? So I said, okay, well, tell me what it is that, uh, that that's in it and I'll see what I can do. And so he had told me what the ingredients were and I went through online, I looked in old books and everything and uh, I didn't see anything that resembled the fly that uh, that I was being asked to tie. So I'm going to call this one the B-Rad Salmon Fly. And it's the Barely Red Atlantic Darter. That's uh, B-Rad. Just going to short form it for that. Um, so I'm just going to show you uh, what I'm going to use to make this fly. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get rolling from there. So I'm just going to take this out of my vise. Uh, it's a fairly simple fly. You can tie this one on a size 4, 6, or an 8. I'm going to use a 4 because 4 is uh, probably a lot easier to see. Although it won't be with my black t-shirt. So there's the, that's the hook. Typical nice sturdy salmon hook. Uh, it the, has a flat tinsel tag, which I have. And it also has a uh, silver tinsel rib. It's got pink and red. Um, it's not a mylar, but it's a, it's a rayon thread. It's a heavier, smoother finished thread that lies nice and flat down onto uh, your fly when you're tying it. So I'll have black, I'll have pink, and I'll have red. And it gets a little messy when I'm tying it because I don't like using them on the bobbin. I prefer to cut a strip off and work it that way, so I, that's how I'm going to proceed with it. Uh, you can tie it with black thread or with white, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to tie the, uh, the one here with black and I'll explain why I'm going to do that. And I'm going to tie some of them as well, but I'm going to use white so they'll have different applications. Now, the one thing that they had said was uh, the fly, the main wing is polar bear hair. So I have some polar bear hair right here. I'm not sure if you've ever dealt with polar bear hair or not, but it's very, um, it's like nylon. I guess that's, what it, you know, it's waterproof. So that's the, that's the key thing to having this. So I was thinking, well, it's really clunky looking and really hard to tie on a small, like a size six or eight hook. So I just went and picked up some Game Changer fur, fake fur. So this is a synthetic blend that uh, I'm gonna tie with this. And that's gonna be the upper wing. The bottom wing part is gonna be uh, uh, just chartreuse. So I'm just gonna pull some feathers off of here and use that as the, uh, I call it the beard on it. And uh, just get some more of, uh, of this stuff on here too, some crystal flash, just to give it a little bit of color. And I think that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, I also, I'm going to try to make this with natural hairs as well. I've got some uh, ram's wool, and I do have some calf's tail, and I'm going to get some arctic fox. I'm not going to use the polar bear. And when I use the, the natural fur, I'm going to use the white, so you can tell uh, it's, it's made with different material. I think with the natural fur, 
once it gets wet, it's going to really sink. So it'll be a quicker sinking fly. Um, if I use the synthetic, it won't sink as fast, so it'll be better for smaller streams and, uh, and things like that. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and get ready. And I hope you enjoy uh, me tying the, uh, the bee rod. All right, so let's tie this fly. I'm just going to start with uh, a black thread and build up a base for this. I tend to like to have my uh, salmon flies with a bit of thickness to them. Just makes for a nicer looking profile for the fly in my opinion. And salmon flies have this turnaround that when they make the hook they come up with a piece of wire, make the eye and just fold a little piece back there which leaves a, an uneven gap that runs down the side so I'm just going to try and fill that gap in. So the next part that I'm going to put on here is uh, some flat tinsel. I've got uh, silver, so this is the two-sided, I've got silver and gold. I'm just going to use the, uh, the silver side. Like I said, you'll see that I'll run this always down on that side where that return is on this hook. So I'll bring that down. Make sure I've got the right side to fold over. There we go. So I want the tag to be the silver side. I do this would be a lot easier to do if I just used silver flat tinsel, but I haven't, so we'll just do it this way. Alright, so that's probably enough there. And wrap that, cut off enough so that it fills in that gap again. And I'll just bring this up to the side that in. So one of the things that always happens whenever you set out to do one of these flies is you end up forgetting the ribbing, which I am quite notorious for. So I'm going to tie in the ribbing next. I'll bring that down a little bit here as well. I don't need a big huge tag for off the back. Alright, so that's tagged. The tag is in there for the ribbing, so I'm going to start working with the color next. And the next big color that I have, I'm just going to take this off here, is the pink. And I could have done it on the bobbin, but I just don't like the way that it kind of comes out of the, the bobbin, so I tend to set this stuff all up by hand. That's fine, I can get things to work a little bit better. Get the material to lay a little bit flatter. I'm just going to take this, wrap this back to about where I think I should end the pink. And then I'm just going to wrap that pink around. See that the thread tends to flare out a little bit with the fibers, which is what I try to get done. I find that you get a better, flatter uh, turnaround on it if that's how you get your flat, your, your thread to lay flat. So bring that up, bring it back, and all that I'm doing here is I'm just building up that body making it nice and smooth. And we'll bring it up to the front. Get that nice and set up. And that should be uh, it for the primary color, which is the pink. I 
I'll just bring that up. Bring that over. Tie it off. Let me snip. Tighten this up a little bit. And I could do this all in just the uh, the pink, and it would be perfectly fine. I just tend to like having the uh, the red in this because when I put in the the throat part on this, I'll put some red feather in there, so it's uh, almost like it's bleeding. You see that on a lot of uh, crankbaits where they have, I guess, what they would call a blood trail on the fly, so. I'm just going to get that going there. Get a nice base down. And this part doesn't have to be super, super good. Um, it's going to be covered with the wing and with the, uh, the throat or the, the neck of uh, the fly. That will. Just tidy everything up here. Make it nice and neat. Put that around. We'll catch the thread. Get a little snip. Tidy it up. Okay, so now the next part is to bring that rib. Through. This is a flattish oval rib, so just going to try and keep the spacing on it here fairly uniform. I'm not sure if the fish truly care about that aesthetic or not. I'm pretty sure when this goes zipping by them in a pool. They're not out there counting the spaces on it. So we'll just clean that up a little bit. Bring everything back. And we'll turn it upside down. And we'll start to build the throat part. So on the fly, this is the throat part that I'm talking about. So I'm just going to take some saddle hackle or some schlappen whatever you happen to have handy you don't need a lot of it so it's just just a little bit and I think you can probably make this as big or as small as as you want uh, I'm gonna just try and keep this a little smaller than I normally tie it Sometimes it's, it's a little bit easy to overthink and do what you're working on here. So again, the next part will be, uh, that was the red that went down, so now we're just going to put on some chartreuse. And again, it, it doesn't have to be big, it just has to fit on there well, that's all. Let's see where our red is with that. Okay. Just gonna give that a couple of wraps to clean it up a bit. Turn it back over. And I'm going to use some of the uh, Game Changer Synthetic. I just try and figure out an amount that to me looks suitable to the fly. You don't want to put too much on or, or too little. And it's probably somewhere in the range. So I'll just cut off some of that. And I'm using the synthetic because it uh, won't absorb the water 
So when you're trying to cast it or get it to move through your pool or your cut, it'll uh, it'll go. It won't sink as much as if it was soaked, like if it was natural hair and soaked. But this will work just fine. So I'm just going to make it kind of as long as what that body is. Wrap it a couple times and get it locked in there. See how it looks. Cut out the excess. Oh, look. Just come in and tidy this up. Now, I had mentioned that I was going to use some crystal flash before I close that head up. I think I will uh, I'll come in and just add a little bit more to this fly. The crystal flash is always a good thing to have. I can manage it here. here. I'm just going to tie that all and I'll come back in and I'll, I'll cut that off and clean it all up. Just bend this head up so that there's no white showing. If there is, you can always come in and color it with some paint. I'm just going to finish this head up. Just make it sure it's nice and tidy. Showing. Let's come in. Do a whip finish on it. And I'll come in and I'll just put some head cement on there and fishing it up. There you go. There is the uh, the B-Rad Atlantic Salmon fly. Pretty easy peasy. I think it all has the right proportions. Looks good and uh, I'll send this one off to the person that asked me to uh, make it up for them. So if uh, anybody would like to uh, Get a hold of some of these, you can just uh, get in touch with me via YouTube, and uh, we'll see what we can do to help you out. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it uh, somewhat informative and got something out of it. I always enjoy doing these videos, I really like the uh, fly tying aspect of things. So get out there, tie some flies, catch some fish, have a good time. Take care.